And so our eureka moment about two years ago was artificial intelligence, where suddenly I had the ability. So normally I would collect all this data and go, okay, well, it seems myelin suppressor cells are important here and T regulatory cells are present here. Okay, I get on the phone or I send an email to whoever the local expert is, either on Stanford campus or around the world, and try to get some information from them. But then now you're dealing with hundreds of cell types, each individually of which, of which have thousands of variations themselves. And each subtle variation means something. Uh, and there's no expert for any of that. But AI can be, at least in part, that expert. So suddenly I have 22 million papers published you know, in, the, in all the fields of science, uh, you know, several tens of millions just in, you know, or se several millions just in immunology alone. And AI can be the sleuth for me can be both the angel and the devil on my shoulder that can make sense of things in ways that I never would have been able to before, especially with agentic AI. So we, for instance, in my lab have developed uh, an agentic AI that is basically an immune, an immunologist scientist in a box. We can give it the raw data and we can pose a question in natural language. Uh, and then we say, hey, make sense of this and turn it into a network. Normally, that would have taken a graduate student, along with a couple of postdocs, months and months and months to put it all together. Now, in three hours, we can get pictures and hypotheses of how all that data fits together in ways that I never could have done before. You know, at the beginning, it in the beginning, it did a lot of hallucinations, which you probably heard about mm -hmm. in AI. But my answer to my colleagues is some of my best students hallucinate. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. And, and so, but, you know, the human's still in the loop. And so with all of this together, now we can make meaning out of the data. And we can skip a lot of the intermediary steps and speed it up. And it's just getting better. I mean, we, for instance, have put in a couple of papers now where, so for instance, in where my special, one of my recent specialties is what's called the tumor immune interface. So you have the tumor, you have the immune system, which is coalescing on, you know, near, and then in some cases the tumor creates a boundary, uh, a barrier between itself and the immune system, uh, where there might be certain kinds of cells that the immune system, uh, the tumor has told the immune system, ignore us, we're not here. Um, and then but what we now can do is there's, well, on the, on the other side of when you look at, let's say, complex patient populations, you find these things called tertiary lymphoid structures. So your body has 220 or so lymph nodes, okay? And the lymph nodes are where the immune system makes decisions, let's say. Uh, it turns out that in the middle of tumors, the body has evolved a mechanism to create what essentially looks like a lymphoid structure in the middle of the tumor. It's sort of a forward camp of immune cells that the more of those you see in a tumor, the better will be your outcome as a patient. Mm. And so we used uh, a cohort of uh, colorectal cell, uh, basically colon cancer patients, where we looked at hundreds of biopsies. And we did that pseudotime analysis where we looked for mature tertiary lymphoid structures. And then we looked for immature, slightly less mature, even more less mature, et cetera. And we were able to backtrack to the cell types which need to come together that would then form the more mature. What use is that? It's a nice paper. But it also now tells us what we might do to create more of these in a tumor. Mm. Because the more we already know from multiple kinds of tumor types now that the more of these tertiary lymphoid structures you have, the better off will be your outcome with chemotherapy. So it might be, for instance, that once we know that you have a disease like this, we could give you some kind of therapy, a virus or what have you, that goes and homes to the tumor, seeds the beginnings of these initiators with there's these cytokines that are produced that are necessary for initiating the formation of these objects. Uh, and so th there's a huge benefit to that, but we never would have found those, in my lab at least, uh, without the AI. Because wow. it, it basically did the work for us.